Something about this doesn't look right. Okay. There it is. So the queen's hanging, that's kind of obviously important. I see a double attack. I'm guessing that the, the reason this is a puzzle at all is that after queen e2, hitting both of these knights, they have queen h4. And if you take this one, they can play queen h2, king f1, queen takes f4 with um, what looks like a lot of counterplay. So it's probably the case that we'll play queen e2, play queen h4, and we'll have to add the move g3. I'm thinking g3 because the rook's also hanging, so there's that. This might be simpler, because there's also this target on g7. I attack the knight, they protect the knight, we play h3, and we win the knight. I think that's that's the whole story. Okay, this is also a variation that looked interesting. I'm wondering why I don't just want a piece with the other line. So let's check that first. Um, oh yeah, knight f6 blocks the bishop. I always make some kind of stupid mistake like this in the first puzzle. It's very frustrating. They can block the bishop. Of course, what else? So they go here and here, and then we play h3. Here I was actually wondering about, um, for example, knight f6, because if I take this, I think they can go ahead and take it. Mm. Yeah, I think that's true. So let's see what they had in mind here. We take, they take. Oh, and we have the in-between move, bishop f2. Yeah, that's nice. So if I go too far this way, they're going to play b4 and c3. So I think probably what is going to happen here is I am going to have to go get this pawn. So their counterplay will be with king f4, so like king d4, king f4, something like that. I think that we can save a lot of time for ourselves by playing the move h5. Because after h5, they have to play, well, they don't actually have to play king g5 for one move. They can still wait one turn. So maybe they could play b4. King d4, c3. Yeah, it's not clear to me if we're winning time all of a sudden. So I was thinking we go here. And that they'd have to go here, but they don't. They could play this. Then they go here.
but this should be winning for white because they're coming to take this pawn on f3 but we've already taken this one so we go here they take this we play a4 and we're like way ahead so at any rate that means b4 is not working i think Just for comparison purposes, I'm wondering like, if we're also just winning like this. I think the answer is no. Well, hold on. I didn't consider the H pawn is running. So if I go here, and they take this, I think I can just play H5 and win the game. Yeah, maybe this is actually pretty simple. King d4, king f4, and then king c5, king takes f3, and h5, just winning. So they cannot really even take this f-pawn, because the h-pawn is going to become a queen. Yeah, this seems very reasonable compared to my h5 line. So they have to play a4, that makes sense, because king f4 is losing. And if I play king c5, I guess they're going to play a3, pawn takes a3 and c3, so I have to play a3 right now. And now I think I win the race, like I go over here, they go over here, I take this, they take that. Um, I take this one, they come over here to try to get their f-pawn rolling, but I'll play b4. They can take on Passant and I'll take it, that's fine. They take here, I play a4, and then I have, it's, it's their turn, like, alright, so let's say they go, like, here. I'm going to play 1, 2, 3, 4 moves and have a queen, they're going to play 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 moves and have a queen. I will be first. Probably winning. Um, is there anything that's, like, just a common sense way to make the position better before playing king c5? I don't think so. Okay, and that's the answer. And of course, you guys are welcome to suggest your own ideas, too. <clears throat> I just might not follow those ideas. So for this one, I've got a lot of minor pieces. For an endgame anyway. I'm down a pawn. I don't see any way to really reduce the material on the board in a in a good way. Rook takes h8 seems like it might be necessary just to avoid rook h2. I don't think white has an advantage in really any area of the board, so I'm kind of confused about what to do here. just searching for ideas here. B7 pawn is weak, um, but it's defended once, and my only piece that can attack B7 is actually at risk of being lost. Okay, maybe the knight is, the knight on G6 is some kind of target, like maybe rook G7, just to consider, just to start calculating something. 
They can play several moves. <clears throat> but notably, knight e5 would lose the game to rook e7, so that's nice. In fact, it looks like um, rook g6 is just a good idea in the first place. Like, they have to defend against rook e7 without losing, and the only way to do it is with a check. So, that looks good. Now, on the next move, they're going to get to move either this knight or this pawn with check. Knight e4 also would win this bishop, potentially, but then I could play rook g6 and then rook g5 and win it back, so maybe that's not so bad. I think king takes might be worse, because after f5 check, um, if I don't move the king, then there's knight f5, which wins the rook. But I can't go here, and I can't go here because of knight f5 check. And if I go to f3, they can rescue this knight with check, which is not preferable. But at the same time, like if I take with this pawn, I don't know, I'm just comparing these two options right now. It's this one or this one. I don't really think bishop takes makes a lot of sense. Another thing, so if I take with the pawn and they play knight e4 check and I move my king, they don't actually have to take this bishop right away, I don't think. <clears throat> because now their king has a space on d6. Maybe I actually don't take this pawn at all. Um, I'm sort of jumping to conclusions here that I should play the move king e2. I mean, uh, king e3 or pawn e3. I could also just play king e2. I was thinking to avoid like king c3, and that's probably how I ran ahead too fast and missed that I could just play king e2. I think that move is fine. Yeah, I think I'm going to play this one. Okay, 94, as intended. So I could take this, they'll get this tempo. Um, and then my bishop is in some small danger. But I can rescue because after I take and they attack the rook, I can play rook h6 attacking their rook. So if they take the bishop, I take the rook, looks good. Yeah, it looks good. And if they take the rook, then I take with the bishop, and then everybody's safe. Everything's fine. So I th think this should be good. I go here and here. All right. Done deal. Now we have another king and pawn end game. I've only done three puzzles, and this is the fourth puzzle in two king and pawn end games. That's funny. Here's a not that forced line that wins a pawn. B5. And then they lose this a5 pawn. Actually, no, they play a6.
and that doesn't look so clear to me. So maybe King A4 could even be ruled out on that basis alone. At the same time, I don't think I would rather have my pawn on A4 when all this shakes out. It's like a much less flexible situation. I don't think there's any way to win except on the queen side. Like, I can't come over here. There's a barrier. Barrier. Um, that's a barrier too. I can't obviously go here. So I think it has to be through the queen side, whatever we do. And I don't think that this is a defending puzzle because black's structure is worse. Um, they're not even up material. So we should be able to hold equality just by shuffling more or less. Like if I play king c3, king b5, king b3, I also don't think they can win. So so here we are. I think king a4 is the only move that really makes a lot of sense. Like b5 is a pawn sacrifice, loses the game, I'm pretty, pretty confident. Um, a4... I don't know what to do after they play like any move. I think even if they play king c6, we're not making progress. So I think king a4 is the only move that could possibly win the game. Now here it's like, do I take this one and play king b4 or do I play b5 and allow a6? I, I just calculated this and it looked very unclear to me. Like I take, take, and then what? 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 Nothing. Exactly. So. I should just take this probably. They go here, I play king b4, only move. They go back and I play king b5. Now this looks like um, we're cooking with rice or something. Um, this is a good thing in the world. I take this one. Okay, king c6, very precise move. I don't know why, but you know the computer played it, so it must be a very precise move. Um, I could say it's the opposition. Hubble Truffle, welcome on Twitch. Hope you're having a lovely day. And if you're not, you know, that's cool too. Um, so here are the only moves that make sense possibly could be a6 and king b4. King b4 and then they play a6. I don't think we're making any progress, so I think I actually have to play a6. And king b4 is my only move that makes any sense whatsoever. Now here, I don't think there's any finesse in just coming and taking these pawns. Like, pretty simple. This is actually like one of the easiest king pawn on game puzzles that I've gotten on light chess. Arvind, welcome. On YouTube. Um, I don't really want to play any games right now, but we could look at a game or something together if you want. Um, I had some stuff planned. Right now I'm just doing my daily tactics, so. Um, but if you want, you can give me a follow and I could play you another time. Uh, what's your what's your light chest handle? I do play with viewers sometimes, but right now I'm not in that, that phase. Usually I'll go through a time where I play viewers a lot and then I'll train for a while and play viewers a lot. Okay, so what's the deal with this? This looks like some pinning situation. But they have various ways to protect this knight. Arvin's username is Illuminati. Interesting. Oh yeah, Hubble Truffle has a good question. Is it Lee Chess or Lie Chess? That's the age-old debate. Um, I'm not sure, honestly. Even like spelling it with Lee with two E's or or, or Lie with L-I-E doesn't disambiguate it because, for instance, the the Lie algebra, I think it's pronounced Lee algebra. So, and it's spelled just like that. So it doesn't make it better. Um, 
I'm going to just follow um, our viewer friend real quick. Hope you guys can forgive me for this little little thingy. All right, I followed you. Um, and maybe we can, we can play another time. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment, Arvind. My game skills are not always excellent, though, I should say. So I'm wondering, like, what is what is going on here if I just play a move like Queen C4? You know, just saying, like, this is p attacking the knight and it's pinned. So let's let's say they play a move like this one. I might be tempted to play Rook D1. I was thinking about like Knight E3 or something, but then there's Rook F2 check. So let's say Rook D1. Now they could play either like queen h3, but let, let's suppose I played queen b3, so there's no queen h3. Um, anyway, now they can play either queen g5 or queen h5. Let's pretend it's queen h5, because this also pins my knight. I don't know how I'm going to make more, more pressure on this knight. You know what, Arvind, if you want one game, I'll give you one game. We can we can always come back to this. Let me challenge Arvind real quick. Oh wait. Let me challenge this guy. Oh, I should probably switch scenes too. Um real time, maybe we'll do like a let's make a three minute game. I don't usually do three minute, but like, let's do it. Uh, Hubble, I'm not strictly a mathematician, but you know, I'm interested. Oh, is he still online? There we go. All right, good luck to Illuminati. Hmm. Let's try something a little bit different. Long pause. going to happen here. This knight is experiencing some bullying, so it goes back to b1. That's what happens when people get bullied, unfortunately. Really. Little do si do, little sidestep here. And I think I want to do this one. I haven't developed my pieces though. That doesn't look very friendly. It's been a while since I've played.
Hmm. Yeah, I'll just do this. That makes sense. I don't know why I lagged out there. That was obnoxious. All right, well, good game. That was a lot closer than I hoped it would be. <laughs> um, Eater Master, welcome. Um, I think I'm only good for one game right now. Um, I'm going to go back to the puzzles, because honestly, that was a little bit too much for me right now. I get really anxious when I play, so I want to I wanna do my puzzles at least before I get like super anxious later on. Alrighty, but thank you for the game. Um, yeah, I hope to play more in the near future, but I'm still working on some stuff. Some ideas to use. So I was just thinking about these things, right? Um, also, welcome, Muter Master. I don't know if I said hello. Yeah, you did Blunder, Arvin, but it's a three-minute game. It's okay. Like, people always blunder in three minutes. I also blundered... Um, if we go back, hold on, we can go back and look at it real quick. Um, but real quick, I do want to do some puzzles, so. Yeah, you, you had a big advantage early in the game. Um, why does this look so bad? Hold on. What have I done? Okay, there we go. I think that fixed it. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm actually probably winning right here. Like, if I check with the engine, it's probably like minus one. Yeah. So you did that thing. But maybe I shouldn't take the pawn right away. Yeah, it says to play a5, which makes some sense. But I don't think there's anything wrong with just taking this either. Okay, queen d7 was the move, according to the engine. This is a hard move to find, though. Well, at least in three minutes. Like, it's not hard to find in a tournament, for example. Um, I was actually thinking to put my rook back on e8 pretty soon. So I was like, do I put this here? Or I didn't really want to go on this open C file. But I was like, you know, maybe I'll support my rook and just sack the exchange and see what happens. It turns out it's a bad exchange sacrifice. Um, but I want to create these past queenside pawns. I think rook e1 makes it kind of obvious that this was bad. Like maybe here you should play rook e8 right away. Yeah, so this is winning. Like mate and some number of moves. Okay, so let's say you go here. And I just go here. What's going to happen? Check and mate, right? Okay, so actually I lose the game immediately. There's nothing really fun about that. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. So, here I wonder if you could do the same thing again. Yeah, it says queen c1. We go here and queen c1. You probably have to play something really sad like this. Yeah, so I think you probably settled for less with your advantage. Um, you played a little bit slowly, which just allowed me to untangle my pieces. Like, here, I bet the position is, like, slightly better for white. Oh, okay, it's still, like, plus three. Interesting. I mean, I expect to be down a piece, pretty much, if I'm playing the, <laughs> the Benoni. Um, I think I made the most of it, because there's, there's not really any way that I can see to hold on to this pawn. Let's see if there's a way, real quick. Okay, it says black is actually winning now after a5. But yeah, that, that's kind of like saying I can't hold the pawn. Yeah, it's not even attempting, just playing king g7, playing on. Okay. Yeah, I think the end game became worse. There was probably a moment where you were okay. Like, maybe here you're fine? Yeah, it says, says this is fine. I should probably not have played rook d4 then. Okay, I thought I was trying to. I thought I was cashing in when this pawn is dying. Maybe it's better to just quickly get this pawn to a4, so I have like real prospects with the remaining pawn. Hmm. Yeah, actually, this makes a lot of sense because this d pawn is not a big asset for you unless you can win this d pawn. So you would have to play some kind of complicated knight maneuver, or maybe like throw a check because I'm controlling I'm controlling all the light squares so it's hard for you to actually get to the d-pawn so maybe it's not urgent for me to go win that d-pawn yeah um I overlooked rook takes c5 but I was focused on the clock at this point like I have 37 seconds I was trying to just, just not not lose make easy moves yeah, this would never happen in like a real game. This is just time pressure stuff right here. Even c4 is not, not great. Like, this is probably winning for black already. Oh, so this white can defend with this. And this. Oh, okay, there's that. So I probably have to go here, maybe? Okay, so maybe not that. Maybe here. Hmm. Yeah, white's just able to blockade, and so they're better here. Makes sense. But now black is winning. But this is all time pressure stuff, again. Like, not really something to be super worried about for your actual chess. Yeah. I mean, playing Benoni in a Blitz game... It kind of makes sense. I'm, I'm just counting on you not being able to handle the the position properly. I really do prefer white in those positions. Alright, anyway, so back to this puzzle, uh, which is only our fifth puzzle of the day. 
and we were looking at how we could put pressure on this knight, but it looks like after moves like rook f5, there's not necessarily something going on. I like to sack an exchange in those uh, Benoni or Benko type situations, but it's either like it's fine or you're lost <laughs> every time. So it's kind of big risk, big risk. But you know, online blitz, I don't care. I think it's good to just try some stuff and uh, try to learn what patterns work and what patterns don't. Okay, I got it. So I'm gonna take, take, take with the queen. They take, and then knight of six. Okay, I think this is it. So I'll start with queen b3, and rook d1. They're just giving it up. I mean, that makes sense, because if they play queen h5, then we win the piece anyway. Well, it's now or never, I'm pretty sure. Um, could there be some queen b7 first? Does it matter? No, they'll play knight e7, so I think we have to take it. Okay, not a hard puzzle. Hubble Truffle said does. Um, did, I, did I use a wrong word in there? Sometimes I stumble. My English is otherwise pretty good. Arvin says that I'm a maybe creative player. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I, I think I was creative first, and then a chess player second. Oh, okay, Hubble, my bad. Um, yeah, I, I think probably, like, creativity is important to me. Um, I don't want to learn how to do necessarily what other people do, unless it helps me to do something that's, like, new or fun. Um, so, I guess I'll take that as a compliment, because it, it means I'm playing chess the way that I want to play, where it's a little bit... A little bit interesting. But in order to be like creative, you also have to know and have some mastery of what's already been done. I think that's true in like painting, for example. So sometimes people um I've noticed that there's a recent trend where people have been doing like abstract or impressionist art, but it's really just like there's there's like throwing paint on the canvas. It doesn't really have a lot going on technically. And it it's like, is that really like uh, an abstract or impressionist thing if you don't really know what people have attempted to do in that genre already? I don't. That's a hot take, perhaps, that you should be familiar with what people have done in order to be a little bit creative. It could be a chicken egg kind of problem. Um, all right, so I'm just looking at this puzzle for the first time, pretty much. Um, we got some some unusually placed pieces. Some checks to look out for. Some pawns to push. Yeah, we can push those pawns. I'd be inclined to just get this going, but I think it's a question of like, do I want to do this first or this first? Definitely not this first, but like rook f5 is probably part of the recipe. So maybe I'll start with h4. Why not? Let's say they go all the way back because, well, I don't know. I don't know why. It just makes sense. Okay, so let's say that they do that. Um, and I take, take, take with check. They uh, mosey the king on down. We play f7. Rook f8. Maybe queen f6 check, king h7. And maybe h5. They can check. We go here. Check. We go here. That looks pretty safe. Okay, all this like feels good. I'd probably play it right away in a blitz game. Yeah, h4 does look... Oh, passive. I thought you said massive. Um, h4 is not that passive, right? Like, I'm attacking the... I'm attacking the rook. Um, one risk might be that I have to trade queens. Maybe I should think about that. Like, let's say I play h4. They check. I go here. They check. I can't go to h3, 
So this could actually be an issue. Because if I have to block with the queen, then they can play rook takes g3 check. Well, no, actually that doesn't matter because the king's on g2. Um, so I stand corrected, but still, like, what am I... Okay, maybe it's not that bad. So let's say I block. I don't know, it's quickly going out of control. Like, they could maybe even play... Mm. Alright, let's say they take. And then move the rook. I could take and play e6, but their king can go to g6, f7, rook f8, and e7 wins the game. Okay, maybe maybe there's something here. Hello, inner circle, welcome. Oh, Hubble Truffle asked a question, I missed that. I'm sorry about that. So you said, why doesn't the engine want white to play f3 instead of taking the pawn in the last example, I guess? You know, I already lost track. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so I think this flurry of checks might be a thing, but as long as I can play rook takes f5 at the end of the line, not on the first move, because they'll play rook takes f5. I don't see that panning out. Um, as long as I can play rook takes f5 and then e6, it's probably going to work out. Like, we're going to get something going with tempo. I don't know. I, I think h4 looks very reasonable. Um, I'd like to rule out other moves, though, of the three-minute game Hubble was talking about. Yeah, we can always look at it later in the Discord. If you guys are interested in joining the Discord and talking about chess and stuff, here is a fresh invite link. I just copied it. I just pasted it. And we can always talk about it later. I think we could probably rule out f7 just on the basis that they could play king g7. So I'm going to start with h4. I think this is clearly the best move. It was clearly wrong. Okay. So f7 also wrong. I don't know what it could be then. Like rook f5 is obviously bad. Rook, up, rook takes f5. Um, could be d5, but it all looks kind of slow. I don't see this being some kind of prophylactic puzzle where I'm like trying to stop queen, ta queen to a1. You know, this is check. I should probably have incorporated this like anywhere in my reasoning. Um, that's important. Hmm. Okay, this is kind of obnoxious that I just missed this check. That is an unforgivable error, in my opinion. H4 did look pretty good, though. Like, the line that I calculated with H4 was check, I go here, check, go here, they block, I mean, they take, I take, they go here, I take, take, and play this. And I'm pretty sure this is winning for white. Oh no, black is winning. Interesting. I thought it would go like this. Oh, here they could play king f7 and then sack back. So there's always that option. Okay, I missed a lot of stuff in that line. It was not forced at all. But missing queen b7, you know, I guess I just have to keep keep warming up today. Um, missing checks and stuff is not good. So we are in check. <laughs> um, it's like, do we go here and block our bishop and do literally nothing, or do we go here? I think this is kind of the the question, and it's an easy question. I think I just go here. Okay. Now it's the trickier bit. Like, do I take one of these, or do I move my bishop, or what? Arvin, um, yeah, I am live on both. And I just kind of toggle back and forth to, to make sure that I see everyone's comments. And I have my phone, you know, like I, I can figure it out. 
I am not high tech about streaming at all, though. Like, I don't have a stream deck or whatever the the thing is called that like enhances your streamer experience. You know, I don't have any fancy buttons or anything. It's just my laptop um, with a built-in webcam and my external mic. That's it. And a lot of alt tabbing. That's probably why you hear me clicking a lot um, on stream. It'd be nice to be able to get like some kind of cool. Um, like tech to make streaming easier, but I'm, I'm not there. I don't even have a place to put stuff right now. And Hubble, yes, most people are chatting on YouTube. But I'm mostly announcing the comments, so hopefully you're not missing too much. So I imagine I should play King B3 and then King takes B2. So it's like a little bit harder for them to start the race. If I take on b2, they might play b4 with tempo, a4, no, they probably wouldn't do that, probably try to make us waste a king move, play c4, king takes b3, c5, well then king b4 wins the pawn, so probably that's not right, I'm still not sure what White's defending idea is. Aside from having five pawns. Yeah, presumably it is, but I don't think I don't think it is difficult to see that presumably it's about getting the pawn to the end of the board. You know, like these kingside pawns pretty much dead, like who cares? Um they're mostly there to slow down White's pawns. The A pawn, it's our only pawn. We need to go, like, make that one promote. It's just, you know, like, how do we do it? That's the only real question here. Like, do we add a bishop move in the middle? Which pawn do we take first? I'm just looking for differences among these uh, features. I just noticed that this box does not look very good. Let me make it bigger. Yes, good. Very tall boy now. All right, cool. I hope that uh, it's so misaligned. Makes me sad to see. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys can read the moves. Okay, so let's just compare these two. If I take this, what are they going to play? This is still where I'm at. Same with King B2. Like, I just don't know what their defending ideas are. Let's pretend that I take this first. Mm, actually... If they're promoting, it might be a G pawn, so I'd rather be on B2 at the end. So let's say I take this one, and they play something. Um, maybe they'll go here. Let's pretend that I want to um, not lose my pawn. I think that's very reasonable. Yeah, they would not go for this pawn. It would be something like, I take this, they go here, attacking this pawn. So it might actually, if it turns out to be important that I not lose this pawn right away, I might have to add a move like um, bishop c6 or bishop d5 to my variation. All right, so let's say they go here, and I take this one, and they take this one, and we start the race. One, two, three, four moves to go make that one. Um, they have one, two, three, four, five moves. So we actually get a queen first. Also, we can stop the pawn. Yeah, I still don't see what white is doing. That makes it difficult. In a circle is asking, I mean, it's not like a full sentence, so I'm not sure if I'm following, but like the possible tracks of the knight, possible counter thrust with the pawn. I mean, yeah, we're basically just looking at all legal moves here because I think every almost every move could potentially be useful for white. What I'm trying to do is just figure out my next move. That's the whole thing. Like, do I want to take on b3 or do I want to take on b2? Do I have to protect my h-pawn? Do I not have to protect my h-pawn? Presumably, if I get my queen faster than them, that's good. Um, so I'd like to save time 
getting the eight pawn down there. I don't want to let them sacrifice the knight to get my last pawn, but the knight's very far away, so that seems okay right now. Um, I don't want them to get a queen as well. Like, if they can... If we both have a queen, then we're kind of back at square one with a very drawish tendency. So... Yeah, we're considering all those things, but I so far haven't figured out what's different between our moves. I think they want to win the H-pawn. Yeah, this is definitely a critical moment. The reason I played the first move quickly is it's not really critical. Like, at least for me. What is a critical moment changes depending on, on the person. Like, for me... There's, there's nothing really critical about choosing between putting my king on e4, where it doesn't do anything, or putting it on c2, and why would I even consider king d2? Like, it, it doesn't have any purpose. So, like, I can logically just play king c2, and this is the real real deal, the situation that we sh should care about um, and be careful in. I can't just throw either king b2 or king b3. They will be different. There's guaranteed to be a difference because where my king ends up is one difference. Um, it, also, what candidate moves they have available to them will be different. I think it's hard to figure out if c4 is useful. Like, if I play king takes b2, they can play the move c4. I wasn't really able to figure out how that might be useful because after king takes b3, um, they could just lose that pawn. I don't see how, like, you know, our bishop covers c6, they're eventually going to reach there and get taken. Um, even if they played one of these moves and brought the pawn to c6, I feel comfortable taking it, because after they after they capture back, our pawn is already going to be on, like, a3. There's just no way that they're going to make it back. I don't think knight circuits are really a, a big um, feature of this position. It's more like, which pawn are they going to take? Which pawn are they going to push? Those kinds of things. Like, they could promote here or here. They don't really have other options. I don't even think that b4 is a real move, because I'll play a4, and if they play b3, I'll play a3. Those seem fine. Um... With the king on c, hmm, okay, maybe, maybe there's a difference where like they could double attack our king and pawn at some point. So for them to do that, they would have to be on either c4 if the king is here, or they would have to be on c5 if the king is here. They can reach c4 like this, but we could also prevent them if we wanted to with a move like this one. White probably wants to take the a pawn with the knight, but like, are they even getting there? Hubble Truffle says, I'd take b3, but he's a patzer. I mean, like, I, I'd probably take b3, <laughs> and I don't know if I'm a patzer or not. Um, I know I try hard on chess. The the b3 pawn just, you know, it seems pretty good. Like, why not? Um, even it, if we're comparing two lines where they could either sack for the pawn or block the pawn entirely, in my mind, those are basically the same thing. Because if the a pawn doesn't become a queen, I think they're going to liquidate this to a draw. They could always just play g4, get rid of all the pawns, and then call it a day. I think that's where this is going. It's tempting to just guess though. Like I really don't see a big difference here. Alright, so I need to take both pawns. This is a logical certainty. Would I rather have it on b2 or b3? Probably I'd rather have it on b3 because we just saw that the knight has the easiest access via c4. Like, they might go um, this way. But they can also go through d3 and e2. So, 
I think these are important to consider as well. Oops, I meant to um, draw more arrows, but I clicky clicked the wrong way. Um, yeah, so the reason I think this is relevant is that they, they could come to C1, and that would be pretty awkward if the king's here and the pawn's here. That could be a defending try. So if my king is on B2, they would get a tempo towards reaching C1, but I could always play king B1 to prevent the knight from actually occupying C1. But then they'll have knight B4, depending on what they choose. Yeah, I don't know. I might want to. I might have to just like play a move and figure it out. Arvin makes the point that knights are are tricky. Yes, quite tricky. Knight is has a reputation for being the trickiest piece. All right. Intuitively, I think I want to put my king on B2, so I'm going to take on B3 first. I got it wrong. This is the answer, and that's the end of the puzzle. Okay. Um, so let's see the main line, whatever they think. You know what's funny? King takes b3 is just lower advantage. Like, it's still showing that black is winning after king b3. So I'm not sure I really like this puzzle on that basis. Let's give it some more engine firepower to see. It's like minus 1 versus minus 6, which is a substantial difference. I don't know. Let, let, me, let me see their line just because. So... I thought I'd want it on b2. They're playing knight e5. Bishop e4 should prevent the knight from reaching. They're not even suggesting a knight move here, of course. Um, King e3 is considering is considered a drawing move, okay. Oh, I guess because now when I play king b2, they get knight c4 in. So I do this, right? So I can play king b2. Yeah, this is annoying. Um, they actually have a way to fork the king and the pawn. That's like the opposite of what I expected. It's this way. I was thinking that I needed to try to prevent... Um, something like this. Well, there's that. Um, but let's say we just add a move in here, right? And they play like, I don't know. Hmm. I was trying to get this going, so like maybe something like this. Just to try to illustrate the idea, like there's the engine is showing better lines already, but like let's just pretend, right? Um hmm. I guess if we can just trade the bishop for the knight, then all those problems go away. This is something that could be like a schematic thinking problem. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hesitate to actually give this a thumbs down. It's it's not a great puzzle in my mind. I'm gonna share this in my Discord so I can look at it later with people. Um, but I, I do think the solution makes sense when I look at it with the engine. All right, let me just post this real quick. And move on with my life. Yeah, I'll be looking at this a little bit more. I think this is more of a like schematic thinking type deal where I need to recognize like which of these themes is more important. Like I know to look out for knight forks. I know they want to come stop the pawn, but there's a lot of different ways from the starting position that, that could occur. So it's hard to hone in on the right or most important feature. Okay, anyway. This is a rook and pawn endgame. This is something I can deal with. I hope. Yeah, tough puzzle. Okay, let me get too happy. Um, hmm. Is it clear that this is the top move? I don't think so. 
I kind of like how these guys are aligned right now. What I don't like is that they're playing Rook F5. Then I go here and they take this, and I probably have to go here and then they check, and it's just it's a mess. But we, at the end of the day, have the advanced pass pawn, so it's probably okay. I wonder if the puzzle is about like not allowing rook f5 and rook f6. Like what if I just go here? Like what are they really going to do about it? You know, if they go back, then I can play this move, which I think arguably improves my position. They might play something like rook a2, but I I can do that too. I can play rook h4 and be a nuisance or maybe Maybe even just, you know, check and check. This would actually win the game. Okay, so if I play this waiting move, they cannot endure rook h8, as far as I can tell. So if they throw this check and I go here, they're also overcommitted. They have to come back immediately to stop the pawn. So this does stop rook f5 and rook f6. Now, what if they play either a pawn move or a king move? If they go here, I think I would... Um, go here. Because if they try to stop it, then I can go here. They probably would take this one. But then I can take with check. They have nowhere to go except the second rank, and then I can win the rook. So... I think that each pawn move is kind of silly, so maybe they'll start running towards the pawn. Maybe I come back at that point. Okay, maybe I'll push the pawn one time. And come back over here. So far I feel good about all these variations. A2 does look pretty natural as well, as Arvin points out. Um, this could be another example of my attention span going nuts. Um, I think I ruled out a2 for a reason. It, it might be right though, because I did see a line where I like just ignore, right? So they they have to go here, right? And now is the time when I play rook h8. I think this actually forces the line that I want to see. Um, and this, you know, just case in point is that they check and take, and I go here, I guess. They can't get behind the pawn, they lose right away. Um, yeah, if they check, then I go here. And if they go here and try to do some tricky, tricky, tricky stuff, then my queen is protecting my rook. I should be fine. Okay, so I, I kind of agree now that a2 is very straightforward. The lines that I calculated with rook f8 and giving them an extra move, they, they come to pass after this move. All right, now it's rook h8. This is the idea that I had. I don't think they can move their king. They're gone, just lose a pawn. I think this is it. Okay, so I wanted to just take on h2, move my rook, take on e4, or something like that. Nothing fancy. But I could also take on e4 directly, maybe? I don't know, vertex h2 looks super natural. Not super natural, but like, very natural, you know? Yeah, I don't see how it could be like equal after rook takes h2. Could it be? Possibly. Rook g, uh, king g3, maybe I'll play like rook d2. Or maybe rook b2. Yeah, 
is. Looks like it's just winning. And it is. Yay. I wonder if other moves were winning too, though. Um, I was contemplating something like this. And it says king g3 equal. Oh yeah, that shouldn't come as any shock. Because like we did all that work so that we could um, protect the pawn from the side and have free reign. So that doesn't come to pass after king g3. Alright, so... Just silly stuff there. Ghostly capture. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Spooky season. Um, well, it's actually not spooky season yet, technically. Um, right. What were we going for here? Queen traps, perhaps? Something trappy. Uh, one thing, like let's say they go here and here and here. Queen is trapped, right? I believe. Yeah, trapped. Um, they could sack the knight, but then we take with the pawn, and then they have to move the queen again to d4. And it's very good. We like it. Yes, it's nice. Um... If we play bishop e3, that is queen b2, not as good, maybe. So, downside for c3, probably is not queen c5, but queen h4. They'll do a slinky escapey type thing. Um, we could play g3, but then they'll play queen h2, rook h1, and actually the queen is trapped there too. So. So what's the deal, yo? We're not even down a piece. Maybe it's this move e4. Uh, the reason I'm thinking about all this stuff is because I could also play g4 and then c3. But I think after g4, they'll probably play e4. And then the queen can, you know, duck. But aren't we still going up a piece in this line? Let's say I go to g3. Maybe not. Maybe they take on d3. Hmm. Yeah, queen h4 is the idea. That's that's why I'm thinking about um, g4 at all. But they don't have queen h6 because the bishop is on c1. And after queen h4, we have g3. And if queen h2, notably they can't play queen e7 because the knight is covering it. Um... So it seems a lot more likely to me that they would get trapped if they play queen h4. So probably e4 is the only move. And just to reiterate those other lines, um, c3, if they go here, we play b4, and then they have to sack a minor piece. I think that's accurate, because if they play e4, first of all, it's like not that logical anymore, but also I can just take this queen, they take my queen, I take their bishop, they take my pawn... And that was move my rook, and I'm I'm Gucci. I'm chilling. It's a vibe. And and if I play c3, queen h4, then there's g3. They can't go back here because the knight on d5 is covering that spot. They can't go here because of the bishop on c1. They have queen h5 though. Okay, so in both lines they can sack a minor piece to escape. Like here they'll sack the knight and if I play g4 they could always um, play e5 and sack the bishop. So if they're sacking a minor piece either way but choosing um, g4 first prevents this line with um, queen h5 
then this seems like the answer to play g4. In the interest of time, I will play it. It was wrong. Let's c3. And then this, and then rook h1, which... Oh no, they, um, they have this. So this is the critical moment, I missed it. I didn't realize that was important. So the important thing here is then what? Preparing rook h1? They throw this move in? That looks crazy. That would allow e4. Maybe take the bishop? Yes, very good. This makes a lot of sense. Um, if they take here, then there's rook h1. Okay, so the reason I got this wrong is that I did not... First of all, I didn't find a resource against this move. Which is probably just g4, honestly. Let's check this. Yeah, it's winning. I don't know why, in my mind I thought after g4 that they can take it, but that doesn't make sense. Yeah, not very clear. I also thought about this with e4, so at least I got this right, where black is escaping after e4. But then I played the move g4, so, you know, I'm just not happy with my calculation. I'm looking for the, the nice thing here, and there is not a nice thing. I didn't like it. Yeah, I definitely overlooked this, for sure. Good question, Arvin. How can I miss this? Um, I managed somehow. Yeah, I, I tend to either like go f go very quickly, or um, or overthink. Two of my um, bad tendencies, which I'm working on, but I don't know. Somehow it's not coming together that easily. Uh, most obvious thing here would be to probably just move this pawn in the way, but I do have to wonder how good that could be. Either way, they're playing this check, right? Dreaming is challenging me. Um, I'm not taking a challenge right this second, but um, if you're there, I appreciate your challenge. I don't know if I want to play a 10 minute game on stream anyway. It might be too much. Um, hmm. So where were we, right? Looking at C4, right, we were thinking about C4. I think this is their obvious next move. I go here. I think they can only take this rook. And this should be good. Rook f7. If they play king g8, then we have... We can take play rook g7 with check. Actually, I don't know if I'm cool with that. It's probably something simpler. So, like, c4, check, go here, take the rook. Alright, probably I could play king, uh, sorry, c4, just on the basis that I don't know why I would play king e1. Actually, king e1, I think it just loses straight up to queen g1. If I play king d2, then this queen takes f2. So, we're playing c4. Okay, they didn't want to They didn't want to play this game. Rook f8, not allowing rook f7 or queen f7. I could take on b5, but then they have queen h1, as usual. I could also take this rook. That's been a feature for a few moves now. If I take the bishop first, they'll, they could at least desperado for this bishop and then play queen h1. 
So I could take this, maybe. And they could get their piece back like that. But then at the end I take their bishop. And they have, they have some checks, but I think they run out pretty quickly. Like I'm going to g2. Hard for me to really say if it's like they're forcing a draw or not. Mr. Bargov is on his YouTube account. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Bargov. I'm going to call you Mr. Bargov as long as you're logged in on your dad's account. Welcome. Anyway, so I could win Bishop. But at what grisly price? I think they have a perpetual at the end. Like King, Queen, H2, I go here, yeah, yeah. We've all heard this story before. They take this one. Also, they can Desperado. Like, we take... They can take this with check and then take and then go here. It's kind of different. They take this one. Oh, but then they don't get a tempo. So I could probably use that move to play queen f6 and protect b2. So they actually can't play. They can't play that. So they have to go here. Oops. Go here. They take this one. Oh, you know what? I could prevent all this queen b2 stuff with queen f6. And then take on b5. I could also play queen f6 right now. That seems like an important detail to uh, keep in mind here. Hmm. Here's a funny thought. Haha. -ha. I could play queen f6. They maybe will play king g8. I don't know. Um, I could take this. They check. I go here. They take the rook. And then I play rook f1, trapping the queen. This suddenly seems very relevant, but Gregory Johannesburg, welcome. Yes, cursed chessboard. You know what? Every single time someone mentions my pieces or my board texture, I change them. So I am now obligated to switch the pieces and stuff. I'll do that after this example. I think queen f6 is is it, but I'm wondering why I can't play first take, go here, and then this one, and then queen f6. Because to me, it looks very similar. I end up playing rook f1, it's the same position. But I could play queen f6 right here, or I could play it after taking the rook. Because either way, I think they kind of have to um, face the music. Well, I like this one, so I'm going to do this one. Um, I take this one, too. All right, nice. Um, now it's time for me to change my pieces in my board, because it has been mentioned. All right, let's do something else that's, like, kind of cursed. This looks like I just lost the game. And by the way, many of you may have also lost the game for the first time in over a decade. Um, Uttermasker, welcome. Jasper, welcome. Um... Jasper claims to love solid openings. What should I play is black against d4. d5, very solid. Queen's Gambit, declined. Probably very solid. I think it's easy to learn, and it'll be rewarding, because um, a lot of it transposes to other openings that you, you might want to play later on. And a lot of the positions with uh, d4, d5, they have my colors reversed as well. So it's good for your overall learning trajectory to learn d5, in my opinion. All right, now the piece set. Um... Now, if we want to go ultra cursed, we could play this one. Um, but I, I don't want to look at this for like more than this amount of time that has just passed. So, this is also pretty cursed. 
this is like Final Fantasy IV chess pieces. Um, yeah, this, this is painful for sure. Um, this one, very svelte. Sort of squishy chess pieces. Um, but I kind of feel like I just want to take a bite out of them instead of like playing good moves. So I think I'll not do that. The knights look pretty chubby in this one, uh, which is of course fine. You know, it's it's a look. Um, but I don't know, they're just like eerily realistic. So these pieces are very decorated. I don't know. These are literally not chess pieces. Now we got these. Is the king wearing a diaper in this one? Is that a pair with an anarchy symbol on it? I kind of like this piece set. But people who like... Are these cautionary cones? You know, I, I like this piece set. But I'm going to go with something a little bit more like... People are going to know what's going on when they look at the board. Like this set. Which might be what I had in the first place. <laughs> I already lost track. Anyway. Um, yes, there was a lot of cringe there. Yeah. And now we have this game over screen type chess set. Dang, the color of the arrow just looks so out of place here. Like film noir, and then suddenly a green arrow. Um, so this is threatening me. So let's look at it. What could possibly go wrong? Famous last words. Um, they could play f6, maybe. Which doesn't really look like things going wrong, exactly. Um, it could be construed as some sort of rightness. So this is an idea. They could play f6. Inner Circle said that they had played with a golfer set, but it's difficult to play because half the time you're trying to figure out what the pieces were. What is a golfer set? Gregory, um, if you see me, feel free to, to mention it. Uh, I'm still looking, though. I don't see any forced mate. We also have this kind of stuff where we like throw a rook move in and then do something cool. Flex very hard at the end. I don't know, this is kind of like a double attack on the, the knight and the checkmate square. The only problem is that this rook is hanging, but like, do I even care is a good question. Like, I go here, they play f6, I take it, they take the rook. I guess the problem could be that the knight, the, the knight is hanging too. Otherwise, I could take on d6, which doesn't look, you know, that bad. Um, so I'm wondering, do I have some kind of nice in-between rook-like thing to do with my life? Take care, Hubble. Take care. All right, Gregory. Sorry to hear that there's no checkmate. Oh, in a circle said that the the golfer set that they played, um, they were all cast figurines of golfers. That is quite unusual. So for the first time, you actually can play um, golf as a team on the golfer chess set. So there's this. You know, I actually have to go to the gym soon. I just realized that. So probably I'll make this my last example for today. So there's this. They're playing f6. Do I want to take the knight? Do I not want to take the knight? I don't know. Oh, another thing could be... Maybe I, like, attack this one. They move the queen because they're like, Aha, I see you attacking my knight. Don't do that. I go here because I want to attack the B ship, of course, what else? Um, maybe they would play bishop d7, I don't know. And then I could sack on g7, or something like that. There's some combination of these things, like this is hanging, this could be under attack, these pieces are hanging, and there's a checkmate threat. Yeah, Koshagra was hiding under a pseudonym, so there's a lot of confusion in the chat. 
I feel like at some point we're all gonna see each other at a tournament and have like no idea who we are. I mean, like I remember some of you guys, but I, like I've never met K Kushagra, for example. I don't think I have anyway. I kind of like this saving the rook with tempo idea, so I'm gonna go with this. Um, I think queen d is very reasonable. Probably there's this move. They probably have to go here, something like that. At the same time, rook c1 forces them to repair the problem with their knight hanging. Okay, so maybe I'll do this first. They go here. And then I have some kind of cool rook move. There's also this unsung hero, this bishop. Maybe that will become useful. I'm also having visions of glory with like a rook on h8. I don't know if that's gonna work. Arvin likes the way that I say bishop, it sounds like. All right. I have a funny way to say knight too, but I can't say it on stream because it, it could easily be misheard in a bad way. Gator Master said queen d4, f6, rook c1 wins right. Does it? I don't know, because they, they can play queen d8. Um, we could play rook h4 maybe, but after a move like bishop e6 or bishop d7, I'm not really sure it's winning. Like, what makes you think it's winning? Rook takes h6 is an idea, but after gh6, I don't have queen f6, for example. I'm continually not able to move the knight. This is not good. We don't like that. Moving the rook to c1 or h4 or something. I don't know. The bishop is... At, at any rate, this bishop on b2 is very good. We like this bishop. Yes, I like it. Um, we're also a pawn down. So even if we win, for example, the d-pawn or the g-pawn, it doesn't mean that we're going to win materially. Winning the G-Palm would probably lead to some kind of attack. That would be nice. At any rate, they want to play Knight C4, probably, on the next move. So Rook C1, they might just meet it with Knight C4. No, but then we can play... We can either take on C4 or take on D5. That seems pretty reasonable. Hmm... This puzzle looks totally solvable. I don't really want to back off of the deep calculation. It's just like right here in front of our faces. Or something. Gregory, um, I don't know the rating of the puzzle. I, I don't have that activated on light chess, but it's probably about, it's somewhere in the range of like 2,500 to 2,700, if, probably. I sometimes get random puzzles that are like 28 or 2,900, but it's, it's pretty rare. Yeter Master claims to see it. Let's let's hear the variation, Yeter Master. I'm eagerly anticipating this clutch variation, which is no doubt about to burst forth. Um, we also have something with knight h4. I'm realizing that too. It could be something where we don't even move the rook. Like, what would that look like? Utterly perplexing. Alright, Eater Master said Queen D4, F6, Rook H4 wins. But like why does it win? I don't see how it's winning. Like the bishop's not even hanging. So let's say you play Rook H4 and they play Knight C4. Yeah, let's actually look at this line. Queen d4, f6, rook h4. 
Um, I was thinking knight c4, but let me also like make a more careful judgment call here. Let's say knight a4. Well, I could actually take on d5 with check. That's an important distinction here. Because f6 is... Okay, this could actually be it. I feel pretty confident to play queen d4 as a first move anyway. Yeah, maybe this is something where we just move the rook. I think knight a4. We could take this with check. Now the bishop's hanging, but our bishop's hanging too. That, that's what kind of got me. It's like, let's say they just play, um, actually no, let's say they play bishop e6. If we play queen takes d6, then they can play knight takes b2. Um, maybe the knight's trapped? I don't think so, though. Like, Because it could come back out on a4. No, queen b3. If rook c1, then there's b5. So they're fine there. Okay, it looks like you guys are all having some interesting ideas now. So Yeter Master is saying, well, knight c4, queen takes d5. I think knight a4 is better. Um, rook takes h3 could also be really good if we play knight c4. So knight a4. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking at knight c4, Yeter Master. I see you reiterating, but that's not what I'm going for. Um, I think this is probably it either way. Like, where are we going to move this rook? Are we really going to throw in rook c1 at this point? I doubt it. I think it's rook h4. But actually, the nice thing, if rook c1, they don't have knight c4. We have queen d5. So, if we do this, they have to go here. We throw this one in. They play bishop d7. No, they play bishop to e6. Yeah, I don't think rook c1 works, so we, we have to try this. Now, bishop to c7 is a pretty resilient effort. Now I'm wondering about rook c1 at this point. Just threatening to take it or something. That doesn't look so good, so I'm just going to keep looking a bit. Could be like a4 as well. After a4, they would probably play a5. So maybe not that. But rook c1 threatens rook takes h3. Or rook takes c7. Those both look pretty, pretty good. Pratik is screaming for g4. It looks like Eater Master is too. I was thinking about, uh, about g4 in the first position, actually. Um, like right here, I was thinking about, you know, at some point we could have it. So it makes sense that it's showing up in this line. Um, but I also feel like it might be an unnecessary weakening for the king. So let's just check. It's probably okay. For example, if they go here and we take, and they take here and we're more or less forced to do this, they could play queen takes g4 check, but then rook g3 protects the knight, blocks the check, doesn't lose a rook. Looks pretty good. Um, if they play g5 though, we would have to play rook takes h6. I don't think any move makes sense besides that. And then they can come out with um, 
Bishop takes g4. I think that looks complicated. I'm not sure that g4 is working. Complicated. I don't think knight g5 is a move worth considering in a circle. I don't think we're just winning a bishop, like after g5. Wait, what am I what am I saying? Actually, after g5, this rook takes h3. Sorry, I'm I'm not thinking clearly. Um Yeah, I think it is just winning a bishop. See, th this is an example of the overthinking problem that I, I tend to have. And I think with rook c1, the most I can win is like two pieces for a rook, and we're already down a pawn. So I kinda like g4. I think this makes a lot of sense. And that was it. Alright. Nice. Um I think I have to stop here. I kind of wish I could do more right now because I feel feel like pretty good about puzzles, but I do have to attend to the other things in life, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, really good stream, you guys, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. If you have not already um, been here, feel free to join our Discord. I'll make a, an invite link for you guys. It looks like uh, Nirmal just joined, so welcome to them. Um, I'm going to share that link again. One second. Yeah, thanks for coming in, Arvind. Um, and thanks thanks to everyone for joining. So I'll see you guys next time, uh, probably tomorrow or something. Yeah, something like tomorrow. Um, Till then, good luck with your chess, and feel free to drop a comment or join the Discord or whatever. All right, see you, everyone.